Okay, we'll start with this. A tweet from Michael Benson. Oscar De La Hoya live on a DAZN broadcast before the Jaime Munguia versus John Ryder fight said, I want to work with every promoter out there. I want to go and work with Bob Arum, work with Eddie Hearn, work with everyone, every single one. But where's Al Heyman? Al, come out from hiding, please. And what would seem like a bipartisan approach to bridge the gap between promotional outfits, major ones, yeah. in the American market is little more than hot air. Yeah. Because you worked with Eddie Hearn to the extent that Al Heyman worked with you. What? You're only willing to work with these other promotional outfits so long as you're at the helm of promotion, kind of like uh. Al was only willing to work with you so long as he was at the helm of promotion. Yeah. The Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia fight, that was a PBC fight. That wasn't a Golden Boy promotion show. That was a PBC show. And this weekend's fight between Jaime Munguia and John Ryder, that wasn't a matchroom show. That was a Golden Boy show. So as long as you're in control... Come on, simplify it. Oscar De La Hoya can't come after Al for something that he's guilty of himself. You're throwing stones in a glass house, essentially. I will admit that I don't think it's quite as bad with Golden Boy as it is and has been with the PBC, that the PBC really do try hard to isolate themselves from everyone else, more so than Golden Boy does. Golden Boy is a little bit more flexible, a little bit more receptive, though not by much. What makes you say that? The collapse of what was supposed to be Mungia versus Charlo over a year ago, over a year ago in 2022, there were talks to do that fight. There was an effort to do it. But it all fell apart because Oscar was demanding that DAZN be involved. Even though DAZN weren't the ones putting up the money to do the show, the money to do the show was coming from Showtime and the PBC. My honest opinion is Oscar was only using that as a smokescreen to not do the fight. Because if DAZN wanted to do the fight, they would have come up with a counter offer. They would have put up some money themselves. Yes. But they didn't. Yes. It's not addressing the fighters and the fight itself and how it might might have played out. That's just saying that you're guilty of some of the same things you accuse Al Heyman of. So it's a little hard to watch Oscar stand on his soapbox and wag his finger at that guy when he's guilty of some of the same things. You know, that same day where he's saying he's willing to work with everybody. He's willing to work with Eddie. He was asked if he'd be receptive to doing a Golden Boy versus Matchroom show. A show that would pit Golden Boy promotions as fighters against Matchroom's fighters. And his words were, I don't know if Hearn has the talent in his stable for Golden Boy versus Matchroom. No, stop it. His stable's deeper than yours and you know it. Devin Haney, the WBC Super Lightweight Champion and Ryan Garcia are rivals. They could fight next now that Garcia's preferred fight with WBA 140 pound champion Roly Romero is no longer an option because Romero will defend his title against Isaac Cruz on March 30th. Regardless, De La Hoya doesn't consider Hearn to be Haney's official promoter. I don't think it happens, De La Hoya said. Last time I heard, Haney was a free agent, so I'm not sure what Hearn is talking about. In all Golden Boy vs. Matchroom showdown, I'm not sure what fighters I can put my fighters against his. I just don't know. I just don't know if he has the talent in his stable. Do you hear this guy? Let's just cut the bullshit. Matchroom has represented Devin Haney as his promoter before. They could very well represent him again. And even if it's not a Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia fight, there are some other fights that would make sense. It's a fucking smokescreen. You don't want to do it. And you don't want to do it not because he doesn't have the depth in his stable, it's because you don't have the depth in yours. They have a lot of tremendous fighters, Eddie Hearn said, and so do we, you know? I mean, if you look at it, you could do a mega card. I mean, firstly, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney, who hopefully we can make this week. Jaime Munguia versus Edgar Berlanga, another incredible fight. I mean, Virgil Ortiz versus one of our 154 guys. Maybe Israel Madrimov, maybe Conor Ben coming up in weight, or Conor Ben against Alexis Rocha at welterweight, you know? You've got Golden Boy's Darius Fulcrum down there seated at the press conference. You know, we've got plenty of middleweights for him as well. So there's literally a dozen fights that you could make. But, you know, it's always disappointing losing to Oscar. So tonight we go with our tail between our legs. And that's the only way 
that Asuka would make a fight with any and one of his fighters, if his fighter is heavily favored to win, which Jaime Munguia was going into this weekend's fight. You know, look, when we was at the WBC event last week, Bob Arum was talking to the PBC guys about maybe doing a top rank against PBC show, Hearn said. I think, you know, for the fans, fans like fantasy matchups, fantasy picks, and you know, we have so many fighters in Golden Boy and Matchroom across the divisions, you could literally have a seven or eight fight card and obviously with us both being on the zone i think it would be a great look and of course it would no platform politics because you're both on the same platform right now zerdo ramirez is set to challenge Arsen gulamarian for his wba title and if he wins matchroom has a horse in that cruiserweight show in that cruiserweight division they've got jai opataya but do you think that oscar would want to put zerdo in there with Jai Opataya. Look at what happened when he put Zerto in there with Dimitri Bivol. Jai is a much bigger, much stronger, and much meaner guy than Dimitri Bivol, who dominated Zerto Ramirez. Do you think that's a fight that Asuka would be receptive to? Because I don't. So in a nutshell, even if the PBC and Al Heyman make themselves very easy targets for criticism, Asuka's throwing stones in a glass house because there's something to be said about him. I think Matchroom versus Golden Boy as a series at the prospect level, the contender level, and the champion level would make for some very interesting fights on the DAZN platform. Eddie wants to do it. Doesn't Asuka? He seems confident in his stable's overall ability and talent, so why not do it? You're on the same platform. It really shouldn't be a problem. Unless you're scared. Men's welterweight, middleweight, and super middleweight news, another fantastic bit of information that comes to us by way of Michael Benson. Canelo Alvarez reportedly looks likely to fight Jamal Charlo and then Terrence Crawford this year, according to Chava ESPN. And you guys already know that I'm a proponent of the Terrence Crawford fight. I think it's a great fight that captures the imagination irrespective of who you think wins, you can sell it because Terrence is buzzing due to his fight, his win over Errol Spence Jr. and Canelo, Canelo sells irrespective of who he's in the ring with. I'm okay with a Crawford fight, but let me tell you one thing. What? Let me tell you one motherfucking thing. What? There's no reason for Canelo Alvarez to be fighting Jamal Charlo. You just fought Jamel. You're gonna turn around and try to sell me his brother? Huh? You're gonna turn around and try to sell me Jamal? Huh? Why? For what fucking reason are you fighting that guy? I gave Canelo a pass for the Golovkin fight. I did. I even gave him a pass for the Ryder fight because John Ryder was his mandatory challenger. And I even gave him a pass for Jamel, but now you're gonna try to turn around and sell me Jamal? Is that the story? I hope it isn't. I hope it's just a baseless rumor. He's giving the Benavidez fans all the ammunition they need to go after him to accuse him of ducking when you're at the PBC you have a multi-fight deal with them and it doesn't include a fight with David I was under the impression that it would be David in September now it's supposed to be Crawford in September got no problem with him fighting Terence Crawford I like the Crawford fight what's all this stuff about Charlo we're making time for Charlo we're taking time out to fight Jamal Charlo let me tell you something what? Canelo Alvarez has a level of autonomy that most boxers will never have. He's the face of boxing. He's not Javante Davis. That kid can barely formulate a sentence, much less make a decision on his own. But Canelo, he's the captain of the ship. He makes all the decisions. He doesn't march to the beat of anybody's drum. So if you end up opposite the ring a Jermall Charlo, it must have been because you wanted to. He's not a guy that takes orders. He's a guy that gives orders. And there's no way you end up opposite the ring that guy. There's no way that fight happens unless you wanted it to happen. Now the last two, three fights, they haven't been all that ambitious. They haven't been horrible. I wouldn't describe them as having been horrible, but they haven't been all that ambitious either. And what you want to kick off this year with is the guy's brother, the guy who you beat last time. You want to fight his twin brother now. Why? And I'm supposed to buy this? Canelo's starting to get on my nerves. Between the assembly line of fighters standing online, single file, waiting to fight him and not fighting each other, fighting anyone else, between that and the potentiality of a pointless Charlo fight. Jaime Munguia just fought this past Saturday. Jaime Munguia called you out. 
said he wants to fight you. I would rather you keep busy with that guy than keep busy with a drug addict. Jim Marcello's about two steps removed from the Betty Ford Center. He's so clearly recovering from something. I don't know what it is. Substance abuse, maybe? He's recovering, he's recovering. He's a recovering drug addict or a recovering amputee. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. But what I do know is he shouldn't be headlining a main event. He shouldn't be opposite the ring somebody like Canelo Alvarez. You're gonna give him a shot at the undisputed crown at 168 pounds. This is why my boxing has regressed in America the way that it has. I feel like the Americans, more so than anybody else, they don't want boxing to operate like a sport. I understand that Canelo's not an American fighter, but he is based out of America. His pay-per-views are marketed to an American audience. So as it pertains to the American boxing scene, and what goes on here, I just feel like here, more so than in other parts of the world, other places and spaces, I feel like in America, more than other places, they don't want boxing to operate like a sport, which is why the market for it is shrinking. In this outfit that prides itself on serving up whatever schlock they feel like, hoping that people are gonna buy it. And when they don't, the sport suffers. Canelo is a great fighter. I say it all the time. I'm a fan of the guy, I am but he's not above criticism. Not if you expect me to accept Jermall Charlo as a worthy combatant, a worthy contender for the undisputed crown at super middleweight. A guy who couldn't put away Jose Benavidez. What are we wasting time on Charlo fights or the Charlo brothers? in 2024. You saw how Jermel performed. What do you think Jermel's gonna do? You think he's gonna be more ambitious? BBC as an outfit doesn't seem to know what to do with this guy, except use him as cannon fodder. So why not stick him in there with Carlos Adamez? Give Carlos the shot he's been waiting for so that he can have the signature fight that he hasn't had yet. A stellar performance against Jermel might be the ticket for him. If Canelo beats him, it's a pointless excursion. But if Carlos beats him, well, maybe he doesn't want to fight Carlos. Oh, he didn't want to fight Carlos? He don't want to fight Carlos? You can hit the fucking bricks if you don't want to fight Carlos. If you don't want to play ball, go hit the fucking road and see what you can find. I think the PBC does a very poor job of shedding the excess. And I understand that Jamal is an unbeaten fighter. He's still an unbeaten fighter, an unbeaten champion. But what is his championship reign like? What money? is it making for you? The PBC actually needs new blood and new faces, new champions to carry the banner into the next generation. You should actually feed him to Carlos Adamez. That should be the play, the ascent of Carlos Adamez. A fresh face, a fresh fighter, a guy who's got a fan-friendly style. If you feed Charlo to Adamez, you get yourself a new champion and a new guy you can sell to the fans. But if you feed Charlo to Canelo, the fans just aren't interested in that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I don't know. What about you guys? Are you guys interested in seeing Canelo versus the other Charlo brother? So let's operate on the assumption that this rumor is true. Canelo's gonna fight Jamal in May and Terence in September. Terence's last fight was at the end of July, last year. If he doesn't have a fight between July of last year and September of this one, there's over a year in between those two fights, unless he fights in the summer months? Maybe. If he does fight in between now and then, who does he fight? Who's available? Well, former two division champion Danny Garcia was supposed to be fighting Arislandi Lara, for Arislandi's WBA title. Perhaps a situation, a fight, can be negotiated between Terence Crawford and Danny Garcia at a catchweight en route to what could be a Canelo Alvarez fight in September. Danny's fight with Lara was supposed to be at 155. Maybe he can fight Terence at 155? And I know, I know, that fight unto itself is not pay-per-view worthy. It's not box office worthy. But when has that ever stopped the PBC from putting a fight like that on pay-per-view? At 155, it wouldn't be for a title. Hey, the Tim Zhu versus Keith Thurman fight is at 155, and that's not for a title. That didn't stop the PBC from billing it as a pay-per-view. So what makes you think they wouldn't bill this fight as a pay-per-view? Another potentiality we have to entertain is a Terence Crawford versus Carlos Adamez fight at a catchweight somewhere within the middleweight limit for what could be 
a newly vacated WBC title. Jamal's newly vacated WBC title. Because if his very next fight is up there at super middleweight against Canelo, if he's fighting Canelo, he's not fighting Carlos. Carlos Adamez is WBC interim champion. If by some chance the title goes vacant between now and September, he gets elevated to full champion, at which point he could defend his title against Terrence! Terrence Crawford and Carlos Adamez used to be sparring partners. I saw sparring footage of the both of them in spite of the discrepancy in weight. It seemed like Terrence was getting the better end of it. That Terrence was doing really well against Carlos Adamez. Now under the hot lights for a WBC title, perhaps Carlos would put on a more inspiring performance. He is naturally bigger than Terrence Crawford, even if he's not as talented or highly ranked. And like Terrence, he is a switch hitter, perhaps not on the same level as Terrence, but he can fight Orthodox and he can fight Southpaw. That's a more intriguing fight than a Danny Garcia fight. And it's a possibility because all this time, Carlos has been waiting to fight Jamal. Jamal who may be fighting Canelo. And if he's fighting Canelo, he's not fighting Carlos. So where does that leave Carlos? It leaves him available to fight Terrence. So you may be thinking to yourself that the name of David Benavidez wasn't in the list of potentials for Canelo Alvarez this year. So if Canelo doesn't fight him this year, what does David do? Who does David fight? Well, I heard on the grapevine that former top rank alum, super middleweight, Jesse Hart of Philadelphia very recently inked a pact with Al Heyman. And I could see them putting Jesse Hart in the ring with David in the mean in between time. Jesse Hart, who fought Zerto Ramirez years ago at super middleweight two times, got beat by him two times, moved up the light heavyweight, got his ass kicked by Joe Smith Jr. I think that he moved back down. I think he's back down at super middleweight. And I mean, what other use do you have for a guy like Jesse Hart, who's not a big ticket seller? The most you can use him for is cannon fodder for somebody else, for somebody like David Benavidez. Cause I don't think David's gonna fight David Morrell. I'd be happy to be wrong about that because I'd love to see it. I'd love to see the fight. I'd love to see David in there with somebody who can fight back, somebody who can punch, but I don't think he wants to roll the dice. I don't think he wants to fight another puncher. I would sooner expect him to fight Jesse Hart. Jesse Hart, who's not that different in terms of styles, to Demetrius Andre, who David Benavidez just fought. He's just, you know, somewhat bigger than Demetrius, but stylistically, they're similar. And I could see David Benavidez fighting Jesse. I could see David Morrell fighting Jesse. But I don't see them fighting each other. I don't. Just some things to think about in light of this rumor.